It's the reward for a job well done. Harvest is underway. Ahead on Grow, we visit a trio of farms to see how growers are coping in tough economic times. Plus, Senator Deb Fisher calls it a win for farmers in a battle over anhydrous ammonia. And up before dawn, farming and marching band share this trait. Meet our farm family of the month. Get ready to grow. Our top story, the president declares disaster because of droughts in south central Nebraska. Egg Secretary Tom Vilsack made the announcement Thursday. Farmers and ranchers in Kearney County and surrounding counties can qualify for assistance. Those in Adams, Buffalo, Franklin, Harlan, Phelps and Webster counties will all be eligible for low interest emergency loans from the USDA. Farmers in those eligible counties have eight months to apply for loans to help cover parts of their actual losses. Mattered not only by the weather, but also the economy. Farmers are looking for everything they can do to stay profitable this year. We caught up with a trio of farmers as they get out there for harvest. Here's more. This will either end up at someone's home or at the movie theaters. This corn won't be fed to cattle, but instead popped into a tasty treat. Yeah, what we're growing ends up in someone's house in New York City, Los Angeles. Popcorn, just one way Lance Atwater and his family tried to grow their income. Trying to find different ways to maybe add a little premium to their crop. So it might be in popcorn, it might be in organic, it could be in the new soybeans. The USDA says farm income will be down for the third straight year. Our expenses are uh, still high and our income has dropped uh, oh third to half of what it was a few years ago. The Ermacher brothers say communication is key, working with their financial team. And hopefully, you know, we had enough cushion from the good years saved back that uh, we can weather the storm here. Jay Reiner says the farmers he talks to are all over the board economically, depending on who marketed crops before prices dipped even lower. I think most guys like me probably didn't do a whole lot because they were talking higher and, you know, drought of 16 was supposed to set in. Well, it did just in Adams County. Prices may be rough, but farmers say harvest is the reward for their efforts. It's what you work for all year long. We also, while we're taking this crop out, we're thinking about next year's crop already. And even the youngest love the combines like Jay's little boy. I imagine his teacher had to sit on him the whole day so he could get out here. And the harvest coming to an end for seed corn and silage. Soybean harvest in full swing. The above normal temperatures hastens emergence of winter wheat crops also and the dry down of fall crops. Corn continues to rate mostly good. 7% harvested according to the latest USDA report. Soybean harvest around 9% as of the last report and should jump in the next report out in a couple of days. As for winter wheat, about three fourths has now been planted. Now to our Twitter poll where we asked growers if they've started Harvest 16 and it looks like most have. About 80% responding harvest underway on their farms. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and we will be looking for your updates. Use the hashtag Harvest 16. An ownership change for a York ethanol plant is now official. They will be buying corn from area growers. Green Plains took over three Avangoa bioenergy ethanol plants. Green Plains grain originates corn from area producers and 58 million bushels of storage at 17 ethanol plants and five grain elevators. A court ruling forces OSHA to follow the law when setting standards for a common fertilizer. The regulations included imposing new limits of anhydrous ammonia storage and enacting them before going through a formal rulemaking process. Steve Nelson, president of Nebraska Farm Bureau, says this is a mark in the win column for Nebraska farmers and fertilizer suppliers. Farm Bureau and others have challenged the flawed logic OSHA used to justify additional regulations. Nelson says, quote, this court action will force OSHA to go back to the drawing board to justify their actions and hopefully mark the beginning of the end for this unwarranted regulatory burden, end quote. Senator Deb Fisher explained on the Senate floor how anhydrous is used and the impact this could all have on Nebraska farmers. 
how it is essential and allows farmers to produce more food while using less land, less water, even less fertilizer. She went on to give examples of how the OSHA regulations would have cost our egg industry. In York, she said Central Valley Egg Co-op anticipated more than $5.5 million in compliance costs, including $100,000 each year. In Elmwood, she cited Midwest Farmers Co-op, estimating producers would spend $20 to $28 more per acre when applying fertilizer to their fields. With current market prices and already high input costs, farmers would have taken quite a hit. They would have forced many farmers to leave the industry altogether. And that would be heartbreaking enough. But there was another, even more troubling aspect to OSHA's standards. They never put it through the required public notice and comment process. OSHA is required by law to conduct this process, as are most federal agencies whenever they issue a new regulation or a standard. The public notice and comment period is a built-in safeguard. It allows those who would be affected by a proposed regulation to have their voices heard. And ideally, the government would listen to their voice. But OSHA didn't follow the rules. They did not listen. They didn't even try to listen. They said their new policy was effective immediately. That was unacceptable to me. And she went on to explain how the court ruling forces OSHA to follow the law and what this means moving forward. With this ruling, an important precedent has been set. The court made it clear OSHA improperly expanded the scope, complexity, and costs of regulation on ag facilities that handle anhydrous ammonia. By disrupting the supply of a vital fertilizer, OSHA would have disrupted farming regulations and those operations. Worse, they would have harmed farmers' ability to do their jobs and, and also to provide for their families. So I'm relieved that the courts came in and upheld the rule of law. America's ag producers will now face one less hardship. They can focus on feeding the world and providing for their own families. Nebraska agriculture is diverse, much more than corn and cattle. NTV's Asia Aubrey took a trip to an eastern Nebraska orchard and vineyard. Apples being sorted soon to turn into cider. This all happening at Kimmel Orchard and Vineyard. Kind of a, a full package deal when you come out here. You're able to experience kind of the farm life, but also um, enjoy all the, the goods that we have in the store as well. At the orchard, you'll find a variety of apples, 25 to be exact, all with a different purpose. You're gonna have your galas, some of your Jonathan's honey crisp apples. Those are more of the sweet apples. And then as you move um, farther towards October is kind of when you get your more baking apples that have more of a tart taste to them. Guests can pick their own fruits. They are able to see where their food comes from, picking it straight from the tree most of the time. You can also do some wine tasting. Kimmel Orchard and Vineyard has seven and a half acres of grapes within the orchard with whites and reds to choose from and some unique flavors like apple pie and cherry. So there's just a whole, whole plethora of things, I guess, that we offer out here. And with the fall weather here, heading to Nebraska City to visit the Orchard and Vineyard would be the perfect trip. And it's pumpkin patch season as NTV's Carmen Montez shows us. Sling on over to Kermosa's Pumpkin Patch this weekend. It's a family tradition that keeps on growing 16 years in the making. Started off a little smaller than what we are now, but it keeps adding a little more every year. The idea for a pumpkin patch started with setting up some irrigation pipes for the season, planting between 30 to 40 varieties of pumpkins. From the minis to the big pumpkins, the white ones, the gourds. Uh, we also have um, the knucklehead pumpkins, one of the warty ones. Uh, all, all kinds of uh, squash, acorns, butternut, spaghetti squash, um, just got a ton of variety of things. Pumpkin patches offer a great opportunity to create lasting memories, trying new adventures, a little bit of everything for both young and wise. We got about a nine acre corn maze, 
um, out here, it's, so it's a lot of fun to go through that. Uh, we got a pumpkin slinger also out here. We got the kids' trikes, we got corn boxes, uh, the slides, the fainting goats, the uh, pony rides on the weekend. A place where you can enjoy activities for the whole family as well as some farm animals. <laughs> they have also started a honeybee project that has been pollinating pumpkins all season long. This helped um, pollinate our, our pumpkins a lot better this year and we do have some honey will be for sale here on the weekends. But the best part, the lasting impressions that are left after visiting a pumpkin patch for both participants as well as the owners. We can make a part of a day out of their life a lot more fun and smiling and laughing, that's well worth it for us. In Gibbon, Carmen Montez, and TV News. Irrigation season is over. Up next, check on the water levels at Lake McConaughey and your weather forecast is still to come. But right now, listen to the group Bragg, Big Red Egg Growers. I'm Ralston Ritz. I'm part of the Bragg Group from Buffalo County. Nebraska's farmers and ranchers are recognized worldwide as agricultural leaders. One in three Nebraska jobs depend on agriculture or agribusiness. 